Wait a minute, you may be asking. Second best? What could be better than this? I'll tell you what's better. Second verse, same as the first. But I enjoyed this one a little bit more. So instead of repeating the exact same things I said about the last fight, I'm just going to focus on what makes it better. This is an example of a fight that needed to be done in 3D. Because if it was done in Sprite, for example, they wouldn't have been able to make it as dynamic as it was. And I'm even willing to go the extra step further and say this is one of the more dynamic fights in their show in general. Something that stays consistent both in space and on Earth. And I like how this battle is framed. Both are soldiers encountering each other and knowing nothing about the other. But as the fight goes on, they slowly start to understand how the other operates and they counter each other accordingly. Topped with fun moments like the tire kick and matrix of leadership, this makes for one awesome sci-fi battle. This is a textbook example of how to make a robot fight, and one I will definitely be looking at in the future. Also no, I never did this fight. What, what makes, makes you think, think I, I ever, ever considered, considered the idea? idea? Okay, this may be the most controversial pick for the list. Okay, make that the second most controversial. But who the cares? Honestly, out of all the fights I've seen in this show, this might just be the most visually interesting with how many different abilities each character had and how they counted the other with them. From numbers, to power, to this. <laughs> really? The fight always kept me guessing on who was going to win and what crazy trick they were going to pull out. Plus, I personally think it really worked in a way that is both epic and even sometimes funny to watch. Sure, since I never had any character from either franchise appear on my show, I really don't know much about either outside of what this episode told us, so I can't really say if the outcome is right or not. But, for what it is, I think it stands up there as probably the closest they've ever come to replicating the sheer insanity that can be found in some shonen anime. Running, coward! This is going to get repetitive, so I'll just say it again for the last time. What can I say about this fight that others haven't already? This was just a fun battle, with a lot of weight behind every impact, with surprisingly good speed for how big these characters are, and there's just a cool dynamic between both fighters. In a way, I weirdly think Godzilla vs. Gamera should have been more like this. My only real complaints would be that I wished it could have taken place in a city because, duh. And I don't think the battle's potential was fully reached, either. I mean, both can fly. So... I really wish that was used more than... not at all. And I could already guess who was going to win based on their research, and by the fact no Power Ranger had won a death battle up to that point. But hey, this is still a fantastic episode either way and one I would happily go back to many, many times more. Just like Goro vs. Machamp, this was a fight that I could live without, but I am glad it exists. <laughs> 
I think this is probably one of the most creative episodes done for the series. How it starts in 2D, but as their battle goes on, it changes animation styles to reflect the shattering reality around them. How quickly the fight escalates in scale, their absurd abilities are on full display. It gave birth to a new meme. How did you get so strong? I eat me spinach. And the moment where Saitama just stops trying to fight to win but to have fun simply because he's found an equal is really satisfying knowing the character. Also, I could talk about that cursed Popeye model, but unlike Batgirl, I think that was intentional. I don't know. I don't have much to say about it, but this is the one fight I truly say is the one where I can feel how much fun the people creating it had. He took a big gamble, but now he is scrambled. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Yeah, out of all the Season 1 episodes, I think this is definitely one that holds up. Once again, this proves Mr. Lang can never be replaced, and a good argument for why sprite animation can look just as good as any other medium used in versus debating. And that sound design, you hear every meaty impact that's done. Plus, I also like the idea of how the fight's portrayed. That the much faster Raiden is unable to be hit by the much slower Thor, so he's forced to adapt his fighting style to this unprecedented foe. And the one time Thor actually hits Raiden with his hammer is probably one of the most impactful hits in the entire show. And while I am iffy about putting a guy who is immune to electricity against a guy whose only ability is electricity, I could also argue that Raiden does have similar abilities, and others that are not mentioned here that could make up for that. But, in the end, this is easily one of my favorite episodes from Season 1. This is what I like to call the spiritual successor to Thor vs. Raiden. <laughs> this is probably the most unique episode Death Battle has done thus far, focusing on figures from actual legends and myths, while making its analysis segments feel less like a rundown of feats, but more like them telling the stories of both combatants. And the fight? Yeah, I love the idea of it being portrayed as a folk tale being read to the audience with the fight taking place on a scroll that unravels as the fight goes on. It really fits with how ancient both these people are. I also really liked the soundtrack, as it fits both characters and their respective cultures. And the fight itself? While I could have predicted Wukong winning because obvious reasons, it does make you wonder just who is going to win as neither really dominates the other through the whole ordeal. And it displays their abilities and arsenals really well. And I like the performances and just how well they are at getting across the personalities of both characters. What more is there to say? This is just a fun battle that brings two legendary figures together to find out who would win a death battle. Woo! I haven't had such fun since I fought all of heaven! What? I don't have an introduction to this fight. What can I say about it? The banter between the two is really fun and fits both characters. And I think the few interactions they do have are quite humorous. Huh, you jump good. Oh, uh, thank you? But let's get to what is easily the best part, the action. This fight is near perfect. The whole setup feels like an old tiny samurai movie with it taking place at a misty waterfall on a rickety bridge and the two warriors crossing paths. 
The movement of their sword strikes feel genuine, and each strike is hard to follow in the best possible way. The way they utilize their environment is great, and that one-stroke duel is probably... No, scratch that. Without a doubt, the most intense moment in the show. Leading up to a great reveal that makes you think one has won the battle, only to reveal the grisly truth. And can we talk about the hand-drawn animation? While it's not a one-to-one -one copy of either style, though it does lean more towards Jax, it really complements the fight much better than Sprite or 3D, and adds to its atmosphere and action. Definitely an upgrade from their first traditionally animated episode, that's for sure. Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. I mean, what else were you expecting? I don't think there was much of a contest here. This is not only just the best episode of season 2, but it's usually regarded to be the best episode of the entire series. And I do agree with that notion for many reasons. First and foremost, unlike most episodes, the fight is less two people just punching each other for entertainment, but tells an actual story with a beginning, middle, and end, creating a very believable scenario where both would have a reason to fight each other. And the way the destruction feels and how the fight escalates from one moment to another is something I don't think has ever been replicated since. I like how it starts off with Iron Man being hopelessly outmatched by Lex in his base armor, and Lex, in all his egotistical glory, gloats about it the whole way. But as soon as he gets the Hulkbuster, the playing field is even out and Iron Man begins rivaling Lex at his own game. Complete with references so organically woven into the fight, it does not feel thrown in there for shits and giggles, but to just emphasize how rich Stark is. With honestly probably the funniest joke in the show's history. Wait, is that the middle? That one might actually make a dent in your wallet. What are you talking about? It's just a car. Seriously? What kind of car was that? Which leads to what is easily the best ending of any death battle. Where we think Lex has won, but as he stands there, a silver strand flies in, revealing Iron Man to still be very much alive. And, now in his most powerful suit, delivers a quote from the comics so well delivered, it feels like it was made for this episode. I'm the most intelligent, capable person on the planet. I'm not playing God. All this time, I've been playing human. Before giving Lex Luthor one of the most satisfying beatdowns in death battle history, complemented by a soundtrack so fitting that I thought it was custom made. When I first watched this fight all those years ago, it felt very close and had me on edge the whole time. This is without a doubt my favorite episode because it doesn't feel like a death battle, but a genuine story about a hero fighting a villain, where the hero has to adapt to the challenge and rise to the occasion. This is a fight universally loved by almost everyone in the Versus community, and myself included. And I think it's safe to say, this is, without a doubt, the best episode of Death Battle of all time. Phone call from Miss Potts. Uh, tell her I'm not here. I'm, uh, jogging. I'm happy to say that while Death Battle has had its lows, and trust me, they are some incredible lows at that. But I am happy to say that their highs are thrice as high. I gave this show a lot of shiitake! But in truth, I really do enjoy the show, and I just want to see it improve and become better. Go beyond what it's currently capable of, because we've seen what it can do. And to say it peaked at Season 2 is just really painful to see. 
I don't know what the future holds, but I am excited for it either way. This show inspired me and others to make our own, and I hope it keeps inspiring others to discuss, debate, and enjoy the fiction we love for many years to come. And with that, I have now talked about my personal best and worst episodes of Death Battle. I guess I have nothing left to talk about regarding this show. Thank you for joining me on this journey of the best and worst episodes. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get back to episode 100 now.